In New York City, a new center that just opened on Randall's Island is expected to house up to 3,000 migrants. And a coalition for the homeless signed an agreement that the city would provide shelter to anyone who seeks it. Uh, this is a sign of a crisis, a greatest, I believe, humanitarian crisis the city has ever witnessed. But with migrants now sleeping on the street around the Roosevelt Hotel, officials are eyeing four popular soccer fields. When asked about the food situation, they all said the same thing. What the shelters are providing isn't adequate. New York City's migrant surge. Mayor of New York City Eric Adams is beginning to turn away some asylum seekers and has threatened to destroy the city if it doesn't receive additional assistance in handling the flow of migrants. Over 116,000 migrants have arrived in New York City since April 2022. The majority entered the country at the U.S.-Mexico border after experiencing hardship in their native countries and applying for asylum, a type of protection that would allow them to stay in the country and avoid deportation. Asylum rules make it necessary for migrants to wait approximately six months for a work permit, meaning that many aren't yet authorized to work in the United States. As per the statement released by the mayor's office, over 60,000 individuals are still under the city's shelter system. The city is expected to spend $12 billion on sheltering and supporting immigrants over the next three fiscal years if migration keeps up its present rate. The crisis has long-standing causes. The influx of migrants from the southern border into cities has exposed and put to the test the fundamental loss in the United States' immigration system, which has long been broken and exacerbated an international humanitarian crisis. The U.S. is facing a humanitarian crisis over where to place migrants who are seeking asylum in this country. I agree with the call for more federal resources. But I think the state and the city are, frankly, missing the ball. And we're totally unprepared to handle that. You look behind us, there's a park, there's a YMCA there, we have a charter. In New York City, a new center that just opened on Randall's Island is expected to house up to 3,000 migrants. The lack of comprehensive federal immigration reform, Trump administration policies, climate change, overburdened immigration courts, and the difficult paths immigrants must take to become permanent residents are just a few of the many reasons cited in a study from the Adams administration. Adams claims that New York City has reached its breaking point and is requesting more assistance from the Biden administration and New York Governor Kathy Hochul. In addition, the humanitarian issue has turned into a political hotspot in New York. Protesters have heckled MPs who discussed the issue to close the border and denounced the city for hosting migrants in residential districts and schools. Adams, the mayor who ran on the platform of making New York City a sanctuary city, has softened his stance as the issue puts a burden on the city's finances. Republicans are keeping an eye out for a new political villain for the 2024 election cycle. Proponents worry that as the nation approaches the general election of 2024, Democratic leaders like Adams are succumbing to dangerously xenophobic rhetoric and that the hardship of thousands of migrants will be exploited as a political pawn. The migrant crisis in New York is actually multiple crises in one. A humanitarian crisis as people from all over the world come to the city to escape poverty and instability. A housing crisis as the city struggles to provide shelter for migrants and a political crisis for the mayor whose handling of the situation has come under increasing criticism from both conservatives and fellow Democrats. For many years, New York City has welcomed waves of immigrants. The situation has slightly changed as a greater portion of the migrants who have come in the last two years are escaping economic difficulty. The Biden administration is granting nearly half a million Venezuelan migrants temporary legal status that will allow them uh, to access work permits. Essentially said that the city is prepared to spend about 12 billion dollars over a three-year period to address this crisis. We're running out of space. It's just there's a lot of corporate greed and we're not using space efficiently. Some of them even expressed concerns about their children's health noting that they've seen them lose weight since coming to America. As a result, they're more likely to be impoverished and to have no established friends or family in the U.S. Furthermore, families are now migrating together rather than simply just single individuals, as was the case in many earlier migration waves. According to Gillette, families have higher standards of what they expect for their living conditions and more needs. Refugees from Europe, including those escaping the conflict in Ukraine, have also entered the country through a Department of Homeland Security-sponsored initiatives like Uniting for Ukraine, arriving primarily in New York. 
Through the program, more than 280,000 Ukrainians have entered the country since its inception in April 2022. While New York City was able to absorb thousands of Ukrainian refugees, proponents of immigration have noticed that the city now views migrants entering the country through the southern border differently. Vanessa Cardenas, the executive director of America's Voice, an organization that promotes the placement of undocumented immigrants on a path to full citizenship, said, Our leadership is buying into the narrative that we can't control immigration, that the wealthiest country on earth can't handle immigrants. They claim it's impossible, but in only a few weeks, New York City processed 100,000 Ukrainians. Adams requested earlier this year that a judge temporarily release the city from its legal duty to house migrants due to the overcrowding in its shelter system. The case is currently pending in court. Meanwhile, there's a crisis in the city's shelter system. Adult migrants housed in the city's shelters received 60-day notices of eviction in July. These notices went into force this past weekend. However, individuals who are unable to get other housing aid are instructed to return home to the Roosevelt Hotel. As of right now, the mayor's office has distributed about 13,000 notices. Additionally, Adams declared on Friday that the maximum stay for adult migrants in shelters run by the city would now only be 30 days, having the previous maximum. And a coalition for the homeless signed an agreement that the city would provide shelter to anyone who seeks it. New York is a city of immigrants and opinions, so naturally the people who live here have a lot to say about the asylum seekers. She called out the left for loving the idea of illegal immigrants until they're actually confronted with a crisis on their doorstep. It's an issue dominating the headlines and dividing the nation, immigration. Local organizations send migrants to navigation centers when they arrive in New York City, usually through the Port Authority bus terminal in Midtown. There, they can obtain health care, Medicaid enrollment, immunizations, school enrollment, legal orientation, and other services. The majority of foreigners entering the U.S. today aren't allowed to work. They have to wait for roughly six months if they want to apply for asylum, and the backlog in asylum applications is making the waiting much longer. Giving work permits earlier would help local groups and governments by enabling immigrants to find employment and support themselves and their families. Congress, however, has done nothing since they want to incite more people to migrate to the U.S. President Joe Biden declared on Wednesday that he would grant temporary protected status or TPS, which entitles individuals to live and work legally in the U.S. for a period of 18 months without facing deportation to approximately 472,000 Venezuelans who arrived in the country prior to July 31st. Additionally, DHS pledged to expedite several migrants' access to work permits. The statements were made in response to pressure from Congress Democrats, including Adams and Hochul, to take action by the Biden administration. Nevertheless, experts say that this is not a permanent solution. Moreover, immigrants will need to petition for TPS before they can start working. Importantly, a way to connect to their loved ones and friends and to people who might be able to help them to get to their final. They say they're looking at this situation. They know this is not the best New York can do. This is not the best the United States can do. They cannot work to provide themselves. We have to provide food, shelter, clothing, cleaning, education, health care. To enable us to get through to those friends or family members across the country and then to rebook you so that you don't have to enter our city system. At the Bronx Defenders, a group that offers legal assistance to immigrants, Carla Ostalaza, Managing Director of Immigration Practice, stated that some migrants with TPS have had to wait two and a half years for work authorization. Many migrants don't have pathways to permanent citizenship, so this is a temporary fix. The Adams administration reports that it has already spent more than $1.73 billion through the end of July 2023 and plans to spend more than $4.73 billion throughout the current fiscal year, which ends June 30th, 2024, even if Biden's TPS decision would eventually have an impact. Adams has stated that he has already made some cuts to the budgets of several local agencies because of the cost burden of assisting migrants. Early in September, he declared, we have a $12 billion deficit that we're going to have to cut. This city's entire service system will be impacted. 
Adams claims that the city spends $383 per home per night on food, lodging, and other services for the more than 25,600 families that are applying for asylum. The average nightly cost for the city of caring for 57,300 migrants is approximately $9.8 million. The city will need to invest $7 billion to our financial plan on top of what we've already spent on this crisis, according to Adams. Adams has requested additional financing from the federal government and some action has already been taken. Federal financing for migrants to date has exceeded $140 million for New York City. It has only received $30 million through FEMA, a small portion of the $350 million in government relief it requested. The mayor's office tells us that all of their housing sites do have viable AC and shower. That is part of our democracy. We're known as a haven for the, for, for, of the free world. Into account the immigration status of those who participate, so it is one of the first programs that they can access. By the magnitude of this migration crisis, shouldered almost entirely by the New York City taxpayers. NYC's largest migrant relief center. Amidst the backdrop of New York City's ongoing migrant crisis, Randall's Island emerges as a beacon of hope and resilience, housing the city's largest migrant relief center. With shelters reaching capacity and resources stretched thin, the decision to establish the expansive facility reflects a commitment to providing dignified support to those seeking refuge in the city. Dr. Ted Long, Senior VP of NYC Health and Hospitals, encapsulates the significance of Randall Island's role in the city's response to the migrant influx. The city's presence underscores the exhaustive efforts to explore all available options and innovate in the face of unprecedented challenges. From its humble beginnings as tents erected in a parking lot, the center has evolved into a sprawling emergency shelter accommodating up to 300,000 adults asylum accommodating up to 300,000 adult asylum seekers. Surprise visits to see the quality of service. How so, often? Uh, very often, very Once often. I can give you... Uh, and on folks uh, who think it is their right to break the law. Absolutely, I'm an immigrant myself. I came in legally, but those people need care. The migrant crisis is quite unprecedented. This transformation symbolizes the city's adaptability and determination to meet the diverse needs of its vulnerable populations. A crucial aspect of the center's operations is the comprehensive health screening provided to incoming migrants. This meticulous process, which includes COVID testing and assessments for infectious diseases like varicella and tuberculosis, underscores the city's commitment to safeguarding public health amidst the ongoing pandemic. Beyond medical care, the center offers essential amenities such as bathrooms, a cafeteria, and access to caseworkers. These services aim to provide a sense of stability and support as migrants navigate the complexities of their new reality. In the midst of uncertainty and upheaval, the center strives to foster a semblance of comfort and dignity for its residents. Special provisions are made to accommodate asylum seekers with disabilities, ensuring equitable access to essential services and facilities. Despite the city's tireless efforts, the lack of substantial federal support remains a glaring issue. To make sure that we're able to meet all their immediate needs, which, as you saw, include medical attention. Or does this speak to the humanitarian crisis your city is facing? This is not a sign of, of progress. Is that about 500 asylum seekers will fit into this new shelter? Those resources that asylum seekers are getting in one place, our residents have to go multiple places for. Commissioner Miguel Castro of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs highlights the disconnect between the city's urgent needs and the federal government's inadequate response. The reliance on state funding to sustain the center underscores the urgent need for comprehensive federal intervention to address the migrant crisis effectively. As the center welcomes its first cohort of residents, consisting of 150 men who have been in city respite centers for an extended period, the focus shifts towards identifying additional sites to expand capacity. This provocative approach reflects the city's commitment to adapt and scale its response to meet evolving needs. The Altercation 
following a spectacular altercation between NYPD officers and migrants that was captured on camera, one person was expelled from the increasingly lawless Randall Island's tent city. Authorities say that the violent incident began at approximately 11 a.m. on Thursday when police were called to the shelter for a man who was causing disturbances. An NYPD spokeswoman told the Post, Upon arrival, officers observed a male who was involved in a verbal dispute with security and acting in a disorderly fashion. The individual was taken off the property. There were no reported injuries. The individual was removed from the immediate area, so the situation didn't escalate, according to police later clarification. According to law enforcement authorities, one person was detained by cops. However, the arrest was sealed since prosecutors decided not to pursue the case. It took some time for more details to become accessible. Eventually, some bystanders entered the fight and even used a rucksack to attack one female cop in the head before the man was restrained. What started the altercation and what the misbehaving individual was doing there are unknown. The man may have attempted to spend the night at the shelter after searching for his mother who was staying at the tent city, according to Manuel Eduardo, 24, who claims that the man did not reside there. At first, the individual was approached by security who requested that he leave. Police were then brought to the conversation as a result of Eduardo's opposition to their requests, the Venezuelan immigrant told the Post on Tuesday. There were first two police officers present, then two grew to four, and four soon to eight. They had a lot of trouble with him, he remarked. A violent encounter between NYPD officers and my, some of the migrants here in the city. Uh, this is a sign of a crisis, a greatest, I believe, humanitarian crisis the city has ever witnessed. And anytime you have uh, 3,000 people who are placed in an environment that they cannot work. For migrants at Orchard Beach is moving. Mayor Adams says the facility will be relocated to Randall's Island due to flooding. Since Daphne Conazales, 24, was fatally knifed in the cafeteria tent last month, police have been present inside the shelter at all times, according to shelter staff. Moments after the gruesome knifing, the defendant, Moises Coronado, allegedly asked for security passes so he could finish the job, according to the prosecution. Chief of Staff Joseph Varlak stated on Tuesday afternoon that although cameras have already been put at the Randalls Island location, an assessment of the possibility of placing metal detectors is still pending. Speaking at a press conference after the Randalls Island incident, Mayor Eric Adams stated, We have, I think, the numbers here, 3,000 men in that facility, the overwhelming number of them looking to take the next step in the journey. What specifically can you do to address that issue of migrants not being able to work? I think there's probably a lot of abandoned buildings that uh, could be used for something better. Just on Sunday alone, 500 migrants came to New York City and we spoke to some of them. And so we are here now trying to make sure that we look at all the options on the table. Have you got any nasty actors? Indeed. Furthermore, Kisner added, anytime you have 3,000 men put in a situation where they're unable to work, they're forced to spend the entire day sitting around. Adam stated, we're going to do a redo because of that video. The police officers went in, carried out their duties, and used the least amount of force to take your suspects into custody. I was briefed on the incident that morning, and I was expecting a follow-up meeting. He stated, this is what happens when you apply this national issue to a city. The Randalls Island tent city has been an okay place to start for Sada Baldiva, who moved here just a month ago and only knows her buddy Sasha. However, she believes it's not a long-term answer. She also played a video of a different altercation, claiming it captured the reality of living at the institution. She declared, I want to leave the tent city. The food is bad and it's dangerous. She also mentioned that she had worked in the hotel business for two years in Dubai and that she finally hoped to find employment there. When the Manhattan District Attorney's Office was asked for a statement regarding the event, they didn't answer right away. The city has the big task of breaking down everything they had set up at Orchard Beach. Where people practically sleeping on top of each other, the people getting threatened that they're going to get deported if they complain about a living condition. Federal immigration authorities say two of the asylum seekers arrested for attacking New York City police officers recently. On the fact that there are many federal resources that they're not utilizing that already exist. Migrants targeted by soccer parents. 
A tent structure with space for up to 2,000 people has reopened on Randall's Island after the ruling by New York State Supreme Court Justice Erica Edwards that the state has an obligation to house refugees. According to reports, a portion of the recent visitors on the island came straight from the queue of stalled asylum seekers that gathered in front of the Roosevelt Hotel back in July. As a result, some residents are already speaking out against the tents while falsely stating that they have nothing against the migrants themselves. They cite children as their justification or maybe as a pretense. Reportedly, the Randalls Island Park Alliance wrote a letter to Deputy Mayor Mira Joshi urging her to select a site that doesn't mean destroying green fields, turning away young athletes, and flying in the face of many supporters who have worked for three decades to build this resource. New Yorkers working on behalf of New Yorkers year after year. In other words, it seems that Mayor Eric Adams has finally found a vocal critic. They also state that on fields 82, 83, 84 and 85, which are located on the southern edge of the park, migrant housing will take precedence over soccer permits. Co-chairs of the Randalls Island Park Alliance Board of Trustees Nancy Neff and Jonathan May asserted in a statement to the media that, We understand that taking these highly used athletic fields offline is a loss for many NY schools and leagues, even though we are sympathetic to the humanitarian crisis. Notably, the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection Commissioner Vilja Vera Mayuga joined the commotion by sending parents of the West Side Soccer League an email with a petition against the housing. We recognize that as a city, we're facing an unparalleled influx of newcomers and that we're finding it difficult to accommodate their needs. But it can't happen at the expense of our children and the NYC government needs to make the right choices. But with migrants now sleeping on the street around the Roosevelt Hotel, officials are eyeing four popular soccer fields. The state alleges that you didn't share information promptly, that you all did not implement programs in a timely manner. The point that New York City can do it alone, we're still rallying as best we can, but we're definitely going to need more federal assistance. In a frantic search for more space to house asylum seekers, the city is now considering building a tent city. Putting it in another way, those who resist claim to be in favor of the city accepting newcomers, but not in their neighborhood or on their child's soccer field, no matter how short term. Of course, not all parents are being antagonistic towards the facility. The petition's opposition to the tent complex reportedly disgusted one upset father who subsequently withdrew his child from the WSSL. Mayuga also issued an apology following the public release of the widely distributed email. It's fascinating that Gail Brewer, a UWS council member representing District 6, tapped into this specific source of hostility with relation to the migrant housing project. I've received calls from numerous soccer coaches who are worried about missed leisure time. Compared to large schools in other boroughs, Manhattan public high schools have very little field space, the user tweeted. 90,000 asylum seekers have entered New York City this year, and Mayor Adams recently accused the state government of failing to enact rules pertaining to cheap housing, which in the long term he said would have provided shelter. We have urged state legislatures to help us build more affordable homes on multiple occasions, but they haven't been able to pass any significant legislation. Since some refugees have also gone into churches or leisure facilities in Brooklyn and Queens, his detractors have argued that the administration's claim that they had run out of shelter was a political fabrication rather than an accurate statement. The analysis of about the 12 spaces they gave us, some of them were in floodplain areas. Some of them were not suitable to build. When asked about the food situation, they all said the same thing. What the shelters are providing isn't adequate. Uh, units. In response, though, to the mayor's claim that housing sites the state offered were not suitable to build in. It's not going to get any better. Uh, from, from this moment on, on it's downhill. In the meantime, the people in charge of managing the Randalls Island complex have bragged about its supposed advantages. We've established successful models at 13 humanitarian relief sites already. This large-scale humanitarian center for adults who traveled many harrowing miles before they found a safe, dignified welcome will provide on-site services that will help these asylum seekers complete their journey, stated Ted Long of NYC Health and Hospitals. As you know, the city's already been spending millions of dollars uh, to care for the influx 
of migrants that have entered the city. Um, I'm meeting our standards, we immediately get in. And we need to be clear that I'm on the ground. I'm not detached from this. And the city has not said where exactly they plan on putting this shelter on Randall's Island. Now, New York City Mayor Eric Adams said yesterday that he supports the city keeping its sanctuary status. Brutal beating of NYPD cop. Federal immigration officials told the Post on Thursday that at least two of the migrants involved in the startling mob attack on two NYPD cops in Times Square that was captured on camera are members of the infamous street gang Tren de Aragua in Venezuela. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement officers are detaining Wilson Juarez, 21, Kevin Servita Aroca, 19, who were accused of carrying out the attack on New York's finest on January 27th. They claim to be members of a violent gang that has established a presence in the Big Apple and are not eligible for bond. According to an email from ICE spokesperson Marie Ferguson to the Post, both illegally present Venezuelan citizens have been charged in conjunction with the violent gang attack carried out on two NYPD officers and are currently detained without bond. Ferguson stated that the Trende Aragua Transnational Criminal Organization has identified both non-citizens as members. Immigration officers apprehended Juarez and Aroca inside a Bronx apartment subsequent to the execution of an arrest warrant for a different asylum seeker who was wanted in connection with the Times Square attack. According to ICE officials, Juarez was picked up on a deportation order from a judge in El Paso, Texas one year ago, while Aroca was arrested on an ICE warrant and will have his custody status re-evaluated. This information was released concurrently with the orders for the detention of two more migrants connected to the Times Square attack, one of whom was given a $100,000 cash bail and the other to be kept without bond in the Big Apple. Uh, they have to sit around all day. Uh, you know, things like this have the potential to happen. Send them back. You don't, you don't touch our police officers. What makes anybody think that he's going to behave on the streets of the city of New York. I don't believe people who are violent in our city and commit repeated crimes. Darwin Andres Gomez Esquel, 19, who was first freed on bond following the beating of two of New York's finest on January 27th, was sent to Rikers Island on Wednesday night after he was apprehended once more for suspected theft at a Queens Macy's department store. In a statement made public on Thursday, Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz stated the rule of law and those who enforce it must be respected. Otherwise, our great city will descend into chaos and brazen lawlessness will rule the day. A few hours before Ulysses Borokes, 21, was charged with cowardly attack and placed under arrest on a $250,000 bond or a $100,000 cash bail, Gomez Esquel was jailed. There was a group of NYPD officers present in court for the proceedings. Regarding the immigration suspects, NYPD PBA President Patrick Hendry declared they have no regard for the law. They don't respect police officers at all. They're only attempting to commit crimes when they're out on the streets of New York City. Court record, prosecutors say he had four previous arrests for petty larceny. It's mind-boggling that anyone would want to try to release this dangerous individual. And they've constantly gone back to that in court, uh, arguing, making the case for some type of bail. After several suspects accused of attacking police officer in Times Square were released without bail. According to Hendry, the union would continue to put pressure on the suspects and the prosecutors who are currently working on the cases. He declared, we're going to hold this criminal justice system accountable from the top all the way down. Being in these courtrooms to ensure that these people are held responsible for these actions, that day is a part of it. Up to 14 people are thought to have participated in the beating of an NYPD lieutenant and a police officer who were trying to break up an unruly gathering. Police have also identified at least one other migrant who is still at large and another person of interest. In connection with the attack on January 27th, eight migrants, Gomez Esquel, Boroquez, Juarez, Aroca, Yorman Reverend, 24, Yohenry Brito, 24, Hohan Boada, 22, and Yarin Madri, 17, have been charged with an attack on a police officer and hindering government administration thus far. Prosecutors in Manhattan first freed the first five suspects without posting bail as they conducted additional research and examined the attack's video footage more closely. 
accused of instigating the group assault on two officers in Times Square was back in court. He is being held on $15,000 bail. And tarnish those overwhelming number who are here following the rules. In which many of the accused suspects are newly arrived asylum seekers. And to help you to establish your goals and to see what we can do as a city to help you get there and to give you that critical period of time. After being detained for the first time last week, Brito was given a $15,000 cash bond or a $50,000 bond by a Manhattan judge. This week, he was freed after a Brooklyn activist priest paid the bond until his next court date. Madrid was the first of the vicious group to be detained without bail on Wednesday. An indictment from Manhattan now lists the names of seven of the migrants. In court documents from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, it stated that Brito was the one who started the altercation on January 27th by standing his ground after the boisterous group was broken up by the police. Prosecutors claimed that in order to avoid being connected to the attack, he traded Juarez his eye-catching yellow hoodie after leaving the scene. The police were reportedly thrown to the ground, kicked and grabbed by the other migrants as they entered the fight. It's a crime against a police officer in the state of New York, um, and they're not, you know, they've not processed, they're not here legally. To protect the health and well-being and the safety of our residents, and our first responders. Attack on two NYPD officers in Times Square. Today, Governor Hochul was fuming over the attack, even threatening to deport the migrants who were involved. You should not be allowed to walk the, cities of, the streets of the city of New York if you are committing any form of criminal behavior. The group then fled, with four of them being arrested at the scene and the remaining ones being called into custody in the weeks that followed. At least two of the accused, Juarez and Oroca, were later detained by federal immigration authorities, according to the prosecution, who also refuted earlier claims that a number of migrants boarded a bus and fled to California. Both individuals were illegally present in the nation and have been charged, according to ICE officials' confirmation on Thursday. Queen's prosecutors requested that Gomez Isquel be kept without bail on the Macy's theft accusation or at the very least have $10,000 placed as bail during his arraignment on Wednesday night. The migrant was ordered to be detained without bail because of the pending Manhattan attack charge, but the judge instead set bail at $1 in the minor theft case. Gomez Isquel was first freed from custody without posting bail in Manhattan. However, he was then brought back before the courts on allegations that he was a member of a migrant group that attempted to pilfer more than $600 worth of apparel from Macy's. Borges, meantime, appeared before a Manhattan judge on Thursday and was given a $100,000 cash bond or a $250,000 bond. Brian Hutchinson, his attorney, questioned the sum. Although the investigation is ongoing, the NYPD has not officially recognized any of the migrants as members of the violent South American gang, according to sources who spoke to the media on Thursday. The South American gang has been infiltrating the five boroughs, according to warnings released by the NYPD. Members of the group enter the nation under false pretenses, seeking asylum only to establish themselves in the city. According to a story published in the Post on Thursday, National Guard soldiers who guard immigrant shelters in the Empire State was advised to look out for telltale trendy Araqua tattoos on newly arrived asylum seekers. Open tent camp for migrants. On Randall's Island, New York is scheduled to establish a winterized tent shelter for recently arrived asylum seekers on Wednesday. The facility, which has a restaurant, leisure area, and bedrooms for roughly 500 single males, will open for business as soon as buses start pulling into the port city in the morning, according to officials. Members of the city council have harshly attacked the site's selection, claiming it would be cruel to have residences and businesses there in the winter and that it's located on a windy, inaccessible island in the East River that's home to a fire department complex, sports ground, and summer festivals, but no residential buildings. However, officials emphasized that it would be more pleasant than the current shelters as they showed a group of reporters around the 84,400 square foot building on Tuesday. There were rows of cots with brand new linens and pillows on top and a rec area with big screen TVs, comfy chairs and games like cribbage, scrabble and chess. There was Wi-Fi available throughout the building and a table next to it was stocked with office phones with international calling capabilities. 
along with wheelchair accessible facilities and trailers where people could be kept apart while awaiting the results of tests for infectious diseases, there were new washers and dryers where officials promised to clean and fold laundry for the migrants. According to the officials, the facility's objectives are to provide a more thorough intake on what's possible at the Port Authority bus terminal in Midtown Manhattan where migrants arrive and to give people a place to rest after their arduous journey. Most migrants arrive from Texas, which has transported thousands of migrants into New York in recent months. According to Dr. Ted Long, a senior administrator in the city's public health care system, 45 minutes isn't enough to figure out where you're going to be for the next several years of your life and to reach a family member who you may not have spoken with in days, weeks or years. He says you've turned away opportunities to house thousands of migrants. Many immigrants have come in and they received help in the past, even though to a limited extent. Duality of calling for rightfully the resources for the city. Even something simple as calling as calling a state of emergency. This is a downsize in comparison to the 1,000 that were supposed to go on Orchard Beach. We'll give you more time. That's what you need right now. There are dozens of individuals undergoing training to work at the location. 90% of the case managers, according to individuals, could speak Spanish. They assisted clients in contacting contacts in the U.S., determining their destination, evaluating their medical needs, and offering further services. Three meals a day will be served at the cafeteria. They added that a security crew was also there and working with the local police. There will be a curfew of 10 p.m., but the guys are free to come and go as they choose. According to them, the facility's day duration is intended to be approximately four days, but there won't be any time restrictions on how long migrants can stay. The officials estimated that the facility would cost in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they were unable to give an exact figure. They also mentioned that the shelter might be expanded to accommodate 500 more people, but that would require hiring more staff. Dr. Long, Commissioner of Immigrant Affairs Manuel Castro, Commissioner of Emergency Management Zach Iskol, and Deputy Mayor for Health and Human Services Ann williams Isom led the visit. Before selecting Randall's Island, the city had considered more than 80 locations, according to Mr. Iskol. An earlier plan to erect tents at the Bronx's Orchard Beach was shelved due to protests from locals, supporters of immigration rights, and representatives from throughout the city. Particularly concerning was the flooding that happened there after a little downpour. According to Mr. Iskell, since the parking area where the tents were erected was somewhat above ground, flooding would not be a problem at Randall's Island. Believe it or not, the city has considered 3,000 different locations to house asylum seekers. The city's first migrant relief center is set to open today on Randall's Island. A temporary shelter will house some of the asylum seekers. I think when we originally did our tent in Randall's Island, that was probably 30,000 migrants ago. Being sent to New York City. The city also says it's working to ensure the educational needs of migrant children are being met as well. See, the price he estimated for demobilizing the Orchard Beach location was 320 $25,000. Mr. Iskell stated there's no perfect place to be doing these kinds of operations. According to Mr. Iskell, the facilities have temperature control and can remain warm when the weather gets chilly. How long the facility would stay open remained unknown. Buses from El Paso, Texas have been the main source of arrivals at the Port Authority. Although the flow of these buses seemed to slow down following the federal government's announcement last week that it would no longer permit Venezuelan asylum seekers to cross the southern border, officials reported that the buses were still arriving. According to Ms. williams Isom, the city was requesting additional federal assistance to deal with the surge and was very appreciative of the Biden administration's attempts to slow the entrance of migrants. She stated that the city has applied to the Federal Emergency Management Agency. According to the officials, the city was also considering additional funding options, like as contributions, to cover the cost of tickets for immigrants who choose to settle in other states. According to Mr. Castro, some migrants had left Texas by using the free ticket to New York, but their ultimate goal was to travel to Florida, where there is a sizable Venezuelan presence. The officials stated that there were not many single women among the newcomers and that families with children would be directed to the Rowe Hotel in Midtown for amenities akin to those provided in Randall's Island. Facing New York City in a way that they have never experienced it before, according to Mayor Eric Adams, who we sat down with. Get that shelter open up. The mayor says this area is less prone to flooding. 
suspect will be in court this morning, we're told, and he is accused of attacking two police officers. Which is one of the reasons we cannot and will not force other parts of our state to shelter migrants. When the city's shelter system overflowed earlier this month, Mayor Eric Adams declared a state of emergency which allowed New York to operate without following the standard procedures for running shelters for the homeless. The new building on Randall's Island is being referred to by the city as a humanitarian emergency center. According to Mr. Castro, there hasn't been an immigration wave like this one in a century. He claimed that the scenario at the Texas border, where authorities were abusing people to northern communities to raise awareness of an increasing number of migrants, was different. He claimed that people were being forced to choose between making their way to a northern city on their own with essentially nothing and receiving free transport, which was equivalent to compulsion. Political actors are the ones causing the situation. New York City just needs to respond, he stated. Well guys, that does it for this video. See you next time and bye for now.